What's up, guys? So today we're going to be taking down the man in question, Gav Rookyard from Darts Planet TV. Going to be going through some stuff that he's done, some stupid stuff that he's done, some screenshots that I've received from one of his little moles in his little in his little gang, in his little VIP gang. Um, and yeah, we've got plenty to talk about. So I want to just quickly just go over how I know him, how I met him. Blah, 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 that sort of stuff. So I made my channel back in November 2009. I was friends with, I am friends with a guy called Adam White who uh, does the reviews over on Darts Planet TV. And I saw that he was doing YouTube and I was like, you know what, I've done YouTube before. I think I'd be a good Darts YouTuber. I'm going to try Darts YouTube. So November the 9th, made a channel, made a few videos, blah, 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 blah. Made a couple of good videos, a couple of crap videos. A lot of them are probably missing off my channel now because I just don't. I didn't really like them looking back at them. I thought they were just a bit crap. Um, but yeah, so basically where this story begins is around December time. So I watched So I, I watched a lot of YouTube. I'd watched um, True, True Geordie. He does live streams about football and when the football's on him live stream. And oh, this is like a while ago. I don't know if he does anymore. Um, but he used to do like live streams where he would react to the football. Uh, there's another YouTube channel I used to watch, which is uh, What Culture WWE. They used to do you. They used to do live streams reacting to um, the. Uh, they used to do live streams reacting to the WWE pay per views as well. So I thought no one's doing this with darts really. I think there might have been one person doing it with darts, but I think he was like German or Dutch or something. So it wasn't like a, there wasn't an English speaking person doing live stream reacts to um, the darts. So I thought I'd do that in the World Championships back in December. So. I probably got like two, three hundred subscribers at this point and I started doing it and it went really well. It went really, really well. I was getting really good views. At one point I received, I was having like 500 current viewers, which is just mental. Um, I still, like, that's really, really good in, in stream terms. So what I did basically was I'd stream my face cam, I'd be watching the darts and I'd also stream the scores, um, so I couldn't, no one no one could see the darts, but they could interact with me and I could tell them what was going on and you could see the scores as they were happening. That's basically what was going on. So I was doing really, really well. And then I get then I get a message from Adam basically saying like, uh, Gav, wants you to, Gav wants you to come over and um, have a look at, like do a stream with him because obviously he's seen how well I'm doing it. He wants a bit of that. And that's what happened. So so this is where this video come, come. So they offered me, so they asked me to come around do a live stream with them um there i am with slightly different hair and there's adam there's gav and basically just invited me over and said look we want to do a live stream why don't you come and be involved and we can we can do a live stream together obviously he'd seen that my live stream had banged and done really well on numbers and stuff so he thought i'll have a bit of that this live stream was kind of crap it was kind of rubbish it flopped a bit i think i don't think he got more than 25 viewers um, I think the live stream was, if I remember correctly, it was just a not a very good live stream. But that's the, you know, you can't you can't always do amazing. But this is like the first time I've met Gav, the first time I've been around his house, first time I spoke to him, really like, in person, and that's that. So yeah, so I went over, met him, made this live stream with him. So I've like not done my own live stream that night to do the live stream here basically and you know because he had like 7,000 subscribers at the time I thought that'd be a really good idea really good for me to try and get my name out there a little bit as well uh, to his audience but the, the live stream did kind of suck um so basically that happened I then went over at his house again uh, maybe a week or two later and then I went and met him at a pub uh near his house like a week or two after that uh, I had loads of ideas for him. I I had an idea for this live stream. Obviously, just come it come from me because I was doing it first, and he wanted to cash in on it. Uh, I gave him the idea of doing a podcast, which he he just never did. I gave him another idea for some other bits, which like okay, they, he never did the ideas, but I was there to trying to give him ideas and stuff, trying to help him out, trying to show him what I thought of his channel, what I thought would work. So there is that. Anyway, so I met him a few times, blah, 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 blah. That's basically what happened. So over the next few weeks and stuff, we spoke in DMs quite a lot. And we spoke about all sorts. Um, loads of stuff happened, whatever. Uh, and he he was very, very anti-YouTuber. So he, it was very apparent from the beginning that he didn't like the other YouTubers. He didn't like Phil Bars from LI Darts. He didn't like Darren from, um, uh, what's, his, what's it called? Darts review channel. He didn't like. Uh, he, he basically he said, and I've got. He said and I've got screenshots that um, Darts incidents is a cunt, uh, and he hopes the channel gets removed. He also said that Gikoma. Sorry, I'm going to say your name wrong here. I have to read it off the off the thing. 
Piestro Santi, sorry if I said your name wrong, he also said that he buys viewers and subs as well. Um, yeah, and also while I was there, he also said that he was trying to get rid of Chris Mason as well off the Darts Plant TV team. So I guess, I guess even your closest friends aren't safe when you're around this bloke. But anyway, so we spoke back and forth and blah, 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 and we had quite a good little relationship going on. So back to me, I uh, sort of end of January received two uh, copyright strikes on my channel. And basically what, what that was, was I'd used someone else's content and they'd struck my channel. And if you get three strikes, then your channel gets deleted uh, or you have to wait three months for them to clear. So that's basically what happened. Uh, I didn't know the ins and outs of YouTube. I didn't realize that the website that I was using and streaming would have got me a copyright strike. And that's what happened. So obviously I went to Gav for advice and help and he gave me the advice and help that I needed. Um, he did help me out through the whole thing a lot. And I'm very thankful that he that he did. Um, otherwise, I might not be here today. You never know. So I guess I'm your own downfall, really. If you didn't help me out, maybe uh, maybe I wouldn't, wouldn't be making this video. <clears throat> so he, yeah, like I said, he helped me out. I was on the phone to him for about 45 minutes trying to work out what the hell I was going to do, how I'm going to get around this. Basically, what ended up happening was I just served out the three months and waited for the... Con waiting for the um, waited for the uh, strikes to go away while you're in while you're under a strike you can't live stream either so i couldn't do any live streams and stuff um but yeah so anyway i get back to my live streams blah blah blah, blah uh and yeah anyway in between that time obviously the whole darts wolf thing had happened this bloke from america um with loads of money decided that he wanted to invest in darts wolf um but anyway so darts wolf happened i was very supportive of them I helped them out. They were receiving a lot of hate back then because obviously people were thinking it was fake. People were thinking they were doing it just for views and just for subs and just for retweets and just for money, which, well, they, they were, but that's not the point. Um, so I was very supportive of them. I tweeted multiple times saying like about Darts Wolf and how they need to give them a chance and stop hating on Gav and this and that and the other. And yeah, so anyway, that all happened. I was very supportive. And then... The relationship kind of went a bit quiet and started turning a bit sour. This is around the time where Darts Wolf was giving away stuff. And I don't think Gav liked the idea of me receiving any of these items. Even though I entered all the giveaways and even at the point where they were giving stuff away for free, all we had to fill out was a form. I filled out this form and didn't receive anything anything at all. Because obviously it's free stuff. Well, I'm not being funny, but if someone's off you free stuff, you just say yes, don't you? You don't be like, oh no, I've got too much pride to take a set of flights off you. I was like, yeah, it's free. If you can send me a dark case or something, whatever. Cheers, mate. You know? Uh, so that's that. Anyway, that's basically the whole story between between me and Gav. So let's move on to uh, the lies that Gav has said about me. So I've got plenty of screenshots here. Let me find some of them. So the first screenshot was the screenshot that I first tweeted about. And this was the one that I was like, you know what? I've, I'm bored of this now. I'm going to go after them because I've just had enough. So this first screenshot was... Gav saying to his little group, uh, Jack, the darts referee, turned, us, turned on us all, sat in my home. I helped him out, Adam's mate. He's one of the ones trying to destroy us. It's very sad. I blocked him months ago. So yeah, well done. You, you blocked me a long time ago. I never, never tried to destroy them. I mean, but he did. He's a fucking idiot, but I never tried to destroy them. So that was one of the tweets. Uh, and then another one was, I helped him so much when he started. He was on the, was on the phone to him when PEC tried to take him down for copyright he was adam's team he had lost a lot of friends and all he cares about is subs and likes don't care about his friends stole adam's idea adam has adam has has enough that's why he left blah blah blah, blah. talking about a bad thing that happened on that day for adam um so this one again you know yeah he was on the phone to me i did say earlier that he was really good he really helped me out um all i care about is subs and likes that's not true but in the same same case i mean you you buy subs you buy likes um so does that not make you any worse the whole point of youtube is to gain a following um so there is that uh stole adam's ideas this is referring to a video that i made months ago um it was putting straws into the back of stems and throwing them which yeah yeah i think adam did mention it once um, but at the same time, it's not a new thing. 
People have been doing that for years and years. I just had an idea that day that I was going to do it. And then and then it was like, oh, yeah, Adam did men men mention that, actually. Not that I was stealing it from him, but he did mention it. Um, so a few other ones that he'd, he'd said. Uh, this Derek Crookyard bloke, by the way, is clearly an insider for you guys. Uh, this is something that Gav said again. I just so fed up with the darts referee trying to destroy the brand. Copying us, slating us, making us look bad. As far as copying you goes... You got an argument on the the straw flights, kind of, not really, but kind of. Um, if you can, if someone can go through and find a video where I re I uploaded it after him, then yeah, fine, whatever. But I've looked through. I've tr I've tried my best. There are so many times where you've copied my stuff. So many times. Does it bother me? No, not really. I mean, world's smallest flight, world's smallest darts. I did that video, then you did it. Um, how much do I earn? I did that video, and then you did it. Um, there's another there's a few there's quite a few quite a few of them where you just uploaded but like sometimes I feel like I should just send you my video to save you all of the editing and editing and recording process because it you know you're just uploading what, what I've done already so if you can find anything that was that was um, that was me copying you then tell me I'd love to see it because I haven't found any yet um, showed him what to do and the PC tried to shut him down off on copyright if not for me he would have quit you know I probably wouldn't have quit but I did say earlier, you know, thanks for the phone call. I appreciated it at the time. He then goes on to say, it's unbelievable. We taxied him around and fed him, showed him what to do, and the PC tried to shut down for copyright. If not for me, he would have quit. So, yeah, um, that was quite funny. We taxied him around, they say. Um, I drove to his house twice, and I drove to the pub near his house once. I've never been in his car. I've, he's never driven me anywhere. I don't understand why he's saying that I tax that he taxied me around. Uh, fed him as well. Also saying that also saying that they they fed me. One of the times um, that we were at Gav's house, he did order kebabs in. Uh, I didn't have one, but he did order kebabs in, and I think he paid for everyone. But I I didn't have one, so that can't apply to me. Um, so that's also another lie. Uh, I, he did give me a can of Fosters, mind. Uh, I had one can of Fosters because I was driving on the on the live stream night. Um, and he did, yeah, he did give me a can of Fosters. So if you want your Fosters back, then I'll send you 90p on on PayPal or something if you want, mate. Uh, that's no problem. Uh, but I just don't really get. It's just lies. It's just it's just lie after lie. So he's basically saying in this one, we tried Zach, not bitter. So many people have used us beyond belief. Blah 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 blah. Threatened by Jack, no. Blah 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 blah. Um, yeah, that's just. If you want to pause that, that's a crap comment. There's nothing really to it. So anyway, let's get into the money side of things. So obviously, he is. Big on his money, loves his VIPs, loves loves to loves to charge people for absolutely everything, t-shirts, memberships, tournaments and stuff, blah 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 whatever. So, money. Let's get onto the let's get onto the let's just talk about the mystery boxes because the mystery boxes are, are quite um quite an interesting one. This this is the mystery box. So it's a DP TV bargain mystery box, minimum value of forty two pounds ninety nine, uh, and then there's one big box apparently. So it costs twenty five quid. This is what you get inside the mystery box. So you get a Target t-shirt, you get a mug, two key rings, a sticker, a beer mat, two sets of flights, and a set of stems. So the t-shirt is currently about 12 quid on Darts Corner. Uh, the mug is, what, three quid. The the uh, the uh, key rings are like a quid each, maybe, maybe two quid each. Flight stems, probably a quid each. Stickers are like 10p, because I've literally just, I've literally just had like all of my own stickers made. Uh, they cost me like seven p each, I think, uh, and then the yeah. So all all together, all together, I've worked it out. I worked it out as uh, I've I've gone I've gone five quid on the mug actually. Uh, but the rest of it, I worked it out to be worth about twenty four quid, twenty four pounds ten pence is the exact amount that I've I've come up with looking on other websites and stuff. Uh, but they're claiming that it's worth forty three quid. Now that's not where the mystery box thing ends either, because. He has said something else about the mystery boxes. So let's have a look at what else he says about, about the mystery boxes. So here is Gav's take on the mystery boxes that all you guys are, are buying. Um, I'm a genius at marketing. The mystery boxes all sold out again so fast. I could have sold over 100. It's so crazy that they are just cheap tats sent to me. But the army love it and it's full fat profit for me. He he, yippee. That's what you. That's what your leader thinks about your mystery boxes. You're out there buying it. You're out there putting money in his pocket, and he, he he's just sending you cheap tat. 
is what you're sending you. For 25 quid, you're getting, what, 20 quid's worth of cheap tat that is just sent to him? He's not even bought it. It's just sent. It's just leftover crap. And you lot are buying it. So, yeah, there is that on the mystery boxes. Uh, yeah, Autism in Darts. So, a little while ago, uh, there's, the, there's a Twitter page called Autism in Darts. Basically, what happened in that situation was the guy who runs the Twitter page, he's 18 years old, he has autism. He decided to tweet out, which he, he probably shouldn't have tweeted it, to be honest. Um, tweeted out saying that he, he wants no affiliation with Darts Planet, basically. Basically, that's what he said. He wants no affiliation with Darts Planet, blah, blah, blah. Well, anyway... Gav and Chris have taken this so badly, taken this so badly, they are slating him on Twitter, they're saying this, that and the other, saying you were never involved, you'd never be part of this, saying that you've, you're blah, 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 whatever, sending all of his little VIP members, all of his little fans to go and, go and hate on an 18 year old autistic lad, um, who has obviously, who has obviously uh, going to be affected by this whole thing. It's not nice. If you if you send abuse to me, I'm a 27 year old. I'm I'm not autistic. I can take it. You send it to an 18 year old autistic guy, mate. That's wrong. It's wrong. Anyway, let's have a look through some of the stuff that was that was said by them because there is there is plenty, plenty said by them. Uh, let's have a look. So he started off by saying, "Geez, what is going on? Autism in darts blocked us after all we have done and supported the players." Blah blah blah. Basically, there are a lot of. If you go through this thread, there is a lot of hate towards this one person. A lot of horrible comments towards this one person. I have sent screenshots, and the whole team are shocked. So basically, what happened was, uh, they unblocked Gav. Um, they apologised for it. They obviously were very very pushed into this apology uh you also had chris mason who said that he better watch their back him and his friends better watch their back you don't threaten them don't threaten them for goodness sake don't really get it anyway all of, uh, the majority of the tweets from the autism awareness and darts page have all been deleted so you can't go back and find them um but i've done plenty of digging to get screenshots and stuff and obviously chris mason's account is not going not there anymore but i do have a screenshot um so i'll show you all of them and stuff now um but yeah, you have badly damaged your charity and pro and project and project by putting out tweets that have been sent to me and also blocking us as a brand. I am still shocked, still in shock. He's shocked by a lot, to be honest. Oh, Gav is very, very shocked. Um, it's just, it's just odd. It's very odd. Uh, I really do feel for um, for the person who 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 done it all. Uh, he also tweeted out at the time he also tweeted out at the time about it being like a bad lapse in judgment and he's really really sorry and uh he had a he had a he had a, had a bad mental day and the like the tweets are still up from gav though he didn't delete gav never deleted the tweet gav never it's, it's almost like it's almost like gav leaving those tweets up was was his his way of saying i am above you i am your leader i'm i'm controlling you this is what happens to people who don't conform. You will get abuse from all of my members. You will get this, that, and the other. So, yeah, that's basically what happened with the autism in darts. I think it's disgusting. I think it's horrible. I think it's just wrong. It's just wrong, basically. Next, we're going to talk about another YouTuber or another network that, that does soft tip, deals in soft tip. So, I will try and keep this... Uh, keep this private but i'm not being funny you're probably going to work it out pretty soon who it is uh this is a message that that gav sent to this other soft tip company so basically it was another sort of nexus group that was competing with gav's group and this is what gav had to say about that so he was also a vip member he he bought himself a nexus he had bought himself his vip membership and he was playing in this nexus tournament <clears throat> he then goes ahead and was like i can run these so i'm going to run my own Nexus tournaments as well for other people if anyone else has a nexus they want to play you know it's free you can just come and play on them you know you don't have to pay the 13 pound a month or something to be a part of the membership you can just come and play on them so that's what he did this is the message that gav sent this man after he decided to run his own tournament he said once your vip membership ends at the end of the month we will deactivate your darts planet tv account which he's obviously paid for uh, we as a team have spoken a lot over the last couple of weeks and really feel let down but our members have copied all of our ideas and use our network to grow this soft tip UK idea 
Wow. The wolf is not happy either, and watch this all unfold. So I don't understand what Darts Wolf got, has got to do with any of this. Um, obviously, he's, I guess he's the one who's provided all of the money for you to do your Nexus giveaways. The wolf is not happy about this either. Weird comment. Uh, your tournaments would not run without our generosity. You mean the generosity of whoever the fuck Darts Wolf is. Um, once again, that we built by sending £50,000 worth of Nexus boards in hard times. So what Gav's saying there is basically, you can't be a part of the Nexus group, you can't run your own tournaments, because we bought all the boards. We paid for all the boards, so you can't run it. Well, when you give the boards away, the problem is, they can do whatever they want with these boards. If you sent me a board, I might have thrown it in the bin. Nothing you can do about it, you've given me the board. If this person wants to run a tournament, we're using the soft tip boards. Maybe some people bought their own soft tip boards. Maybe people had their own Nexus boards. But you're basically saying that you own Nexus as a collective. You own all the groups of Nexus of soft tip as a collective, and no one else can do anything because it's all your idea. Well, it's not your idea. Darts tournaments have been going on for months, years even. Darts tournaments have been going on for such a long time. You did not invent the Nexus. You did not police. You did not police the Nexus. People want to play darts on a Nexus board. It's not up to you to determine who plays and who doesn't. It's not up to you to determine what companies can run their own tournaments and what they can't. So that's that. Another thing is the buying websites thing. So yesterday, Gav decided to, or the day before, whatever it was, decided to buy, let's have a look, he bought a load of websites, he bought a load of websites, it was really, really odd, um, but this is something that I was already prepared for, because when I've gone to, gone to Gav's house, he was like, he said to me, like, in a very boastful way, go to livedarts.tv, and I went to livedarts.tv, and it redirected me to dartsplanet.tv, um, so I was very, very weary back then. So I quickly bought the dartsreferee.co.uk and redirected it to my YouTube channel so that I could have the dartsreferee.co.uk. Well, recently, Gav has decided that he's going to, uh, he's, he's, he's bought, he's paid for out of the money he's earned from those tatty bargain boxes. Uh, he's bought dartsreferee.co.uk without the the. He's bought the dartsreferee.com. He still has live darts.tv. He's bought dartsreferee.com. And there's another one as well that he bought. Now, interestingly enough, and this is quite funny actually, if you go to the websites, because obviously I kicked up a massive stink on Twitter about it yesterday, taking the complete piss. If you go on the website, dartsreferee.com, it now takes you to a YouTube page, uh, Ask the Referee Russ Bray. So that is kind of a bit of a waste of money, Gav but it was a waste of money in the first place. LiveDarts.tv, where does that take you anymore? I'm not sure where that goes anymore. Let's have a look, shall we? That still takes you to the Darts Planet TV website, so that's that. Uh, the DartsReferee.com is another one. Uh, that currently takes you to YouTube as well. Uh, and the DartsReferee.co.uk, that currently takes you to the YouTube channel as well. But, Gavin, expected this from you. Expected this silliness from you. Uh, here we go. Look, here's a video of me going to uh, going to these these websites individually and them coming up to uh, to your page. Uh, someone tweeted you about this earlier and you denied it and said that there must be something wrong with his phone. I think we all know what happened. You bought URLs based on me uh, and you redirected them to your website. The reason why he's done that is because he can't gain any traction himself. He has to but has to piggyback off Phil Bars and Live Darts and me and, and my site. He has to piggyback off them to get any sort of viewership because people don't want to watch his crap. Except the reviews, the reviews. Anyway, this is something that you guys are going to want to listen to. This is a theory that I have. This is not proof. I have no proof on this, but I'm going to stick this at the end of the video because this is something that I think you guys should all hear. So, here we have it. NHS charity match. This was a charity match done for the NHS. Right, so I just want to start off by saying that I also did an NHS charity stream. Uh, and there are a few different things that happened in my stream and his stream. In my stream, this is what I decided to do. Uh, I decided to create myself a, a Just Giving page. 
uh, and I got the donations. We raised two hundred and eighty-two pounds and forty-four pence. That's how much we raised on the on our stream, which is great. Thank you so much, NHS. Obviously, it was a really, really like, important time for them. A lot of people were raising money for the NHS, so I did that, and Gab did the same, which is great. You know, I'm not I'm not slating the fact that he did a, he did a stream for the NHS. That's perfect. That's great. That's what we need. Uh, but I did mine on Just Giving, and the reason I did mine on Just Giving is because that's uh 100 percent of donations as far as i'm aware go to the charity that you decided the charity that i was going to was supporting the nhs staff and volunteers caring for covid 19 patients run by nhs charities together this is where my money went to all the money raised on my stream went to this company went to this charity as far as gav's stream went well all the donations went through super chat so if you flick through you'll see that people have donated this person donated two us dollars uh, this person donated five quid, blah, 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 blah. This Dark Wolf, here he is, 180 US dollars. Um, yeah, is there a problem with that? Yeah, there is actually. Here's the problem. Uh, so, every donation that goes through YouTube, YouTube actually take 45% of the donations. 40 or 45%, one or the other. So, let's say it's 45%. Let's say that you donate 20 quid. Well, nine pounds of your donation goes to YouTube. Which doesn't make sense. Why would you want why would you want forty five percent of your donation to go to YouTube when you're trying to donate to a charity to help out the NHS? Why would you want it to go to YouTube? Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense at all. So here we have it. This is the stream. Uh five hundred and two pounds raised from the top from, from tonight. Unfortunately YouTube take thirty percent. Uh we raised three hundred and twenty pounds for the tournament. Blah 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 blah. Uh so YouTube don't take thirty percent, they take like forty five uh, 40 to 45 percent so that's wrong so that's that number's not not right so 320 pounds isn't right and i can prove that 320 pounds isn't right because in this video where uh gav talks about how much money did i earn from youtube uh you can see it uh, nhs charity match 294 pounds so it is actually 40 percent or whatever um but anyway back to the nhs stream why would you allow a company to take a percentage of charitable donations. Now, the only reason I can imagine why you would allow that is because you want the money to go through you to the charity. My way that I did it, it goes straight to the charity. Your way that you did it, it goes to you first. But why would you need the money to go to you first? Well, did it even go to the charity? Let's be honest. Did it even go to the charity? Who knows? Who knows? Because as an egotistical maniac that you are, Gavin, um, I personally believe, and this is obviously speculation, I've got no proof of it, I personally believe that the money never went to the charity. The money never went there because it doesn't make sense. If you're an egotistical maniac who loves attention, why did you not post a screenshot when you donated the money? I think the reason you didn't post a screenshot is because either, number one, the figures were wrong. You claimed that you earned more than you did and you didn't donate the full amount because you claimed that you earned £502 when you didn't. You actually earned £294. Um, and, yeah, what, why? Why would you do it through YouTube? Why would you allow a company to take a percentage of your donations? I don't get it. I do not understand unless you were never going to give the money in the first place. I am very, very surprised that you've never, never tweeted a screenshot to show that you donated money because, you know, you'd get loads of praise on it. So why would you not get loads of praise on something? Because we all know that you love it. We all know that you're, you're an egotistical maniac. You love the praise. Why would you not tweet it? I don't understand. If you can provide me a screenshot from April the 19th, 20th, that sort of time that you actually donated, let's say, £294 uh, to the NHS, then fair play. I'll take it all back. But... I don't think you can. I don't think you will. And that's that. So, yeah. Have a think about that, guys. Why the hell would you donate money to someone if a company was going to take a big percentage of it? Why would you donate money to charity? I don't understand. Why don't you just set up a Just Giving page? Why don't you just do it in a way that the money doesn't go to you first? Why don't you do it in a way that doesn't make your numbers look bigger? Why don't you do it in a way that you can't... You can't even be accused of cheating. You can't even be accused of stealing money from the NHS. You can't even be accused of anything like this. So, yeah, that's my take on this all. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, Gav, you're an arsehole. You're an idiot. You're an absolute idiot. I hope everyone sees the light, and I hope people stop believing and following in your 
crap, basically, because you're an idiot. But yeah, anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this. Hope you enjoyed the little rant that I went on, uh, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, yeah, good luck to you, Gav. Hope you don't lose much from this, but fuck you.